just got off work. I'm back. Off work sports. Mikey B talking today. We're going to talk about a little bit about the Summer League. Orlando League started 7-1 to 7-6. I think the end date is today. There's a lot of games that went on, and what you get to see in the Summer League is the a, is a rookies kind of showcasing themselves, kind of showing, hey, I belong. Even though the competition is not at the level of this in-season veteran players, you did get get to see them against the top talent from around college as well as the G League. And then some veteran players that are still trying to make their cut or make their impressions. Now, a lot of these guys showcase not only just for the NBA and not only for the G League, they're making a showcase for Europe. So um, don't be on a downer if you don't see some of your players play, actually, or, or don't play a lot of minutes. It's just they're being watched by a lot of scouts from all over the world, including China, who's paying well, to get in some type of league and make some cash. But with that said, I want to talk about the rookies. Big draft this year. A lot of people are talking about how this may be one of the top drafts that we had in a long time. And if you're looking at the picks, who played in the summer league, we had Markel Fultz. We had Jason Tatum showcasing himself. We also had the number six pick, Jonathan Isaac, as well in that stream. Along with that, Bam Adebayo was also there from the Heat. Luke Kennard. And then we also had uh, the gentleman out of Florida State, Dwayne Bacon, also made his impact for Charlotte. Now, Malik Monk, for some reason, didn't play in this league. Uh, and Dwayne Bacon got the time. As you know, my buddy is Frankie Vision, so we're going to take a look at some of the videos and look at the rosters and, and how I think they'll play out. So I want to start off with the Pistons because a big surprise for me, Luke Kennard, the same thing he was doing at Duke, is the same thing he's doing in the Summer League. Let's take a quick look at the film quickly, then look at the roster. Seems like Dallas has settled in. Get it with great the Again, Luke, same old thing. Same thing that he did at Duke, he's doing here. Has a good spot up three, can drive. People are saying, you know, are trying to compare them. I'll tell you what. Let's not get racial with it. He's a James Harden type player. He is a James Harden type player on this team. So the Pistons had to look at their roster, and I think Caldwell Pope is available to go. This guy is, you know, and by the way, the jump shot is looking good. So, you know, Luke Luke is not incredibly athletic. James Harden doesn't show all his athleticism, but he's very, very ambidextrous is what I would call it. But, look again, Luke is doing a, did a great job in the summer league. He was consistent throughout. Good three-point jumper, could put the ball on the floor. Pretty good talent. Pistons got a steal once again. It's all a matter how they put these pieces together. I like their GM work. Whoever's scouting, they do a good job there. I'll stop here, and let's take a quick look at the roster, and then we'll get into another Pistons player that made a big impact. So as I see it, Reggie Bullock is there, okay? Contavious Pope is the guy that could leave. I think he, he, has, the, he has the option to go free agent. So they'll probably re-sign the kid, but there's a possibility that he could leave. Stanley Johnson is there. A guy that is in a lot of turmoil right now with the team. Um, they kind of don't know the direction they're headed with him. Uh, he was there representing the Pistons in the summer league, kind of showcasing his his uh, his teammate, basically being a cheerleader on the sidelines. Uh, but this could be an opportunity if he leaves again. Again, this guy's a beast, Stanley Johnson. I don't know why they're not playing the kid. I have no clue. Trade him if you're not going to use him. Um, but the issue may be Tobias Harris, who at 6'9", plays the three. He can switch over to the four for, for some, you know, leeway time. He's not a full-time four, even though even though in this league he probably can do it. He can play like a Draymond Green type role. But he also plays the three in that Stanley Johnson's position. So that that's where the minutes are being taken. And then they, I think they use John Lauer a little bit in that kind of dual role as a 
forward forward position, not power forward forward. So you switch off small forward or power forward either or. And then Marquise Morris does the same deal. So you got two thirty-five. I would call them forwards that can play multiple positions. And then Stanley's kind of the odd man out. That said, he's that athletic that he can play shooting guard. So what do you say? You're talking about Luke Kennard, right, Mikey? So why are you going to these guys? What I'm saying is, is Caldwell Pope? He had a great season last year. Is he something you want to? Is he somebody you want to pay? When his first year is a little bit shaky, he's come along very strong because of the minutes he's gotten. So, again, I, I think that anyone that given enough time will become a good player. And not a great player, not a superstar, but a good player. Aaron Afalo type. I think he's a great player in this league. Luke Kennard has potential there and looks like, again, this is only summer league, looks like he can showcase himself. Where I say, hey, give him a go. Let's see what he got. Start him. Let Caldwell Pope go. Start to build a young nucleus. I would start Luke Kennard. I would start Stanley Johnson. I would bring Tobias Harris to the four. Lee Drummond at the five. And then throw in, uh, you know, Reggie Jackson as, as your one. Okay. And Reggie Jackson, albeit he switched over, he made the push from, from the OKC. He wanted to be a starter. He is a starter in this league. Is he a starter that's going to help you win ball games? I don't know right now. I don't know right now. Okay, so we got to see how that nucleus meshes. They do need a couple more pieces. I like what they have. Uh, but I want to get into another player that really, really excited me. And I think he's actually a bottleneck because this is a poor man's Dirk Nowitzki. Henry Ellison. Let's look at the highlights on this guy. This guy was incredible in the summer league. Uh, he was doing some great things. Let's kind of look at this highlight. Again, 29 and 6. Uh-oh, Jumpman commercial. This is GD's latest, so support him. I don't want to I don't want to take people's stuff. But here goes Henry. Look at his three-point shot. Beautiful. Okay. Again, post up. Dirk. Dirk. Let me do it again. Let's do it again. Here goes post up. Three. Look at this. Forget about it. Forget about it. I mean, guys, this, this guy's on the bench. The Pistons need to develop their players. Tobias Harris is a, a great piece, but he needs to be coming off the bench. That is, you know, he, he's had his chance in Orlando. He's a solid player, but you could use him off. The, Henry Ellison is a dog, fellas. I mean, man. He is a dog. The guy is a poor man's Dirk Nowitzki. You want some more? Uh, uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'll tell you what. Pistons have some players here, folks. Uh, they have some pieces. And I think they need to just load up their bench. I think I, I still think Stanley Johnson can be a superstar in this league. That's my opinion. I think that's their superstar player. And then how he meshes with Drummond. Drummond can still play in this league. What is he a superstar? He already he's already a superstar. But how will his role be in this new run and gun NBA? I say he can do fine because I remember Drummond in high school was playing almost point guard. He could dribble up the court and run. So this is all a means of uh, Mr. Drummond getting in shape. So I like the Pistons. Just showing you the highlights. Ellison and Mr. Kennard stuck out for me on that team. All right. If we keep looking at the plot here and looking at the other teams, let's jump over to uh, Mr. Jason Tatum. I mentioned how great he was uh, in in the Boston Celtics. Tatum was amazing. I don't even. I, I think everyone's seen the highlights on this kid. I mean, this kid can ball out all day. He's he's been incredible in the summer league. He's really I, I don't know what Josh Jackson can bring to the table. I don't I don't I don't think he has more upside. I don't think Josh Jackson has more upside than this kid from what I saw. Because of his ability to handle the ball. He has similar type athleticism. Matter of fact, look at this. Matter of fact, I think that Tatum may be more athletically inclined, especially on the offensive end. Look at this. 6'9", 6'10", kid. 
Oh, we're going to talk about that auto porter in the next video. That's crazy. 106 million for auto porter. Come on. But again, a little stagnant on the video, but there goes Jason Tatum. He did his job. I mean, the kid was amazing. Outside of Jalen Brown, he was probably the best guy on his squad. Beautiful. Member 6'9". So how does he play into this team? And why I made the, 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 the video on Gordon Haywood was, I don't know where he plays into this team. All right? that That's the issue. You know, is he, are you going to sit this kid? You're going to hurt him. I, I talked about this before. You got so many forwards already. Crowder, Brown, Green. Jarebko, Jarebko sometimes fills in at the three. I think James Young is out. Great talent. He If he can get on with somebody else as a bench scorer, that's what he has to do. You know, look at L.A., one of those squads that's been depleted, or even the uh, uh, Brooklyn Nets. But, again, good opportunity uh, to play him, and then they bring in Hayward. So it uh, doesn't make sense to me, but Tatum was the second most impressive player to me. First was Luke Kennard because I could see how he could effectively help the Pistons immediately. I know he's going to play. That's what basically why I put him up there. Uh, I, I, think, I think Tatum's going to have to sit because of who they brought in. So Jason Tatum was next. Pretty good highlights, a little bit stagnant there. Donovan Mitchell. Don Mitchell. Let's go to 23-point game. This guy, I didn't even know he was out of Louisville. I had no clue who this kid was. I never really seen him play. But Jesus. Great games. I mean, this kid, this kid was incredible. And 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 the Utah Jazz are kind of on uh, you know weeded out mode where they're where they're letting all the gas go. Everybody's going, so they're kind of re but George Hill's on his way out. So forget about that. Hayward's gone, right? Um, so they got Alec Burke, who's I think he's returning from the ACL. Dante Exum had a great summer league, by the way, folks. A sleeper uh, had a great summer league, but other than that, I think Exum is really a a, a guard. Uh, Donovan Mitchell was effective, man. He was effective. Uh, he he kind of reminded me of Sheldon Mack, the player they picked up. He plays like a vet. He plays like a vet. So what I think he'll be, he is going to be, look at this shot. Boom. He's going to be a Lewis Williams type of player because I don't see him as a as a point guard yet. I think he's a scoring guard who can come off the bench and light it up. Great range, can drive as well, can put the ball on the floor. Great control, you know, floor generalship. Look at that body move in your body. Get the foul again. Smart moves. The competition. I know it's not. I know it's not the veterans in season, but these rookies really showcase themselves. Look at this move. Beautiful. So Mitchell was another one that stood out to me as a player that can make the impact. He's going to play this year. He's going to play because I think I think Joe Johnson's going to go. It's depleting. Uh, they have to think about Nigel Williams-Gross and Raul Nato, how they fit in because they're loaded up with those guards in that range, the 6-3 range, 6-3 to 6-1. They're loaded up with those guards, but I would say he's a shooting guard. He's a pure scorer. There's no doubt about that. Uh, similar to uh, he went he went to Louisville, and there was another guy to Louisville who should be in the league right now is Russ, Russ Smith. He's in the G League, killing it still. Still can't get a call up. It's a shame, but Donovan Mitchell reminds me of Russell's, Russ Smith, but in the NBA, he's going to be like a Lewis Williams type. He's, he's a different type of handler. He's more fluid, has a beautiful shot. I really like this kid. Great pickup. Shout out to the scouts on the Jazz. Oh, man. This kid here. Bam out of Bayou. Oh, what? Pat Riley. Forget about bringing in talent. You can build, man. You know how to pick them. Pat Riley. Bam out of Bayou. I tell you what. All right? Don't smack me. Bam Bam looks to be. Amari Stoudemire, Dwight Howard, Light. He's that combo. Okay? Here goes the variance. 
here goes the variance on this kid. First of all, I can shoot three free throws. <laughs> I'm joking, Dwight. Uh, so, so the thing is, the big thing is he can shoot 16, 17 footer. I saw him working on that. But he is definitely to me, definitely to me. Look at the high. Mm. And Amari Stoudemire type impact player. He can run up and down the court. He's young. This is a steal. Him and Hassan in there. I mean, they're going to be, I would say, the the best center power forward tandem in the next four years next to Davis and Cousins, who people are sleeping on, and I have no clue why no one's trying to get traded over there. Chris Paul and Carmelo Anthony with them two would have been a beast mode. would have been a problem for the, uh, for the Golden State Warriors. Would have been a problem. And then surround them with some defensive players, Beverly-like players, to scrap a curry. I have no clue why Chris Paul went to the Rockets instead of the Pelicans. And Carmelo Anthony should look to them if he if, if he went there as well. That said, Bam out of Bayou, you heard it here first. Armari Stoudemire, Dwight Howard combination. Light. Light. Okay. This is what we have here with this kid. Look at this. Look at this. Ah, uh, Euro. So, again, great talent, great pickup. We've seen the highlights here. I like this kid. He's the next one down. Go back over. And and, and there's no reason for him not to play here. He's going to get minutes. I think Udonis is going to is gonna call it quits. If he, I think he has already. So, you you know, he's going to take fill in that role. James Johnson is gone. I, I, I suggested James Johnson going to, um, to the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> Excuse me, to the Wizards. I think he would have a big impact on the Wizards and play with them. Jazz are looking at him as well, but I think he's a great fit for the uh, Washington Wizards with Otto Porter gone. He could fill right in and, and take that role. I love the kid here. Uh, I don't need to say anything more. You're going to see him play. He fits in well. He'll get some minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then build up through the end of the year because they're in rebuild mode. But, um, you know, McRoberts has, he's older, used to be a super athlete, probably still can't, is. Uh, he's going to learn a lot from McRoberts, jump shot wise. Willie Reed is a great backup. He can do a lot of different things. He'll be a staple for them. So I think a good nucleus in the inside. Now what they have to figure out is what they're going to do on the outside for this team. All right. And again, you got a lot of good players. You got to look at the line and say they, they don't suck. It's just that you, in this league, you need superstars. So Waiters either has to develop into a superstar. Josh Richardson has to. Some of these guys have to develop, into, oh, and they got Winslow. Winslow has to develop into a superstar in order for them to be competitive. There's, there's no other way around it. You can't just be a regular star on, it, on in the NBA anymore. Um, that's, that's the way it is. That's the way the league is now. So great job by Bam. Markel Fultz, I don't need to say much about him. He did the same thing he did at Washington. All right. Same thing he did at Washington, he did uh, for the 76ers. I think it was a great pickup for them. He, I got him ranked fourth because we knew what he was going to do, right? We knew what he was going to do. Impressive. He can still get a shot off. A um, little bit of turnovers, high turnovers. You can expect that from a ball-handling rookie. He's going to have the ball most of the time. But I would say I would say Markel impressed me with his savviness, his, his generalship. He's, he's already – he already feels like a vet. And my comparison to him was the new age um, Mitch Richmond, and I'm still there. You know, he does, he's doing the same things. Look, same, same old, same old. All right, he's going to be a great scorer. Uh, you know, and possibly a go-to guy at the end of the games. I don't think the Sixers have that. I think he's the go-to guy. I think if MB shuts everything down and and, Pitt and and Simmons does his thing, this is your go-to guy. You know, if you if you're looking at the uh, the Heat when they had LeBron, Simmons could be LeBron. Uh, Joel MB could play your your Chris Bosh type, even though they're not in the same role. But this guy is your Dwayne Wade. He's your Dwayne Wade, so let's see how he develops. They didn't win too much with him scoring like that, but he showed a lot, showed some defensive capabilities. He did what he thought we would he we he would we he would do. You know, he did what we thought we we would see him do from Washington. So impressive. 
uh, good job to him. And uh, I think he'll have a successful season. As I mentioned, 16, 18 points a game uh, with that with that team that he has there. A couple surprise points uh, that I wanted to bring up. My man, Dwayne Bacon. Congratulations, my friend. Great job. Charlotte, surprised out of Florida. Uh, it's Florida State. And I think he's actually originally from Florida as well. So, great pickup. Home team, Orlando, I think is what he plays for in the summertime with uh, Austin Rivers and all those cats. So, great job for Dwayne. I think he'll make this team. You know, I see why the trade was made. You know, old Frank from uh, Beautiful Move there. Beautiful Move. Look at that. The Duke, the Frank from the Duke from Duke was a good pickup, but you know he's a smaller guard. He fits that guard role, six three, six four. This guy is about six eight, six nine. Okay, even though he's six seven, you know how we give him two inches. I'm giving him two more inches with his length, and, and an incredible scoring package. So, who does he compare to? Okay, how about this? How about this? Glenn Rice in his later years. <laughs> that, that's crazy, isn't it? Uh, he has a good jump shot, and and uh, what I'm talking about is his later years. His score mentality, obviously, he's driving like Glenn Rice never did. So that, that may be a stupid comparison, but um, Glenn Rice type of player, six seven, great scorer. He's gonna be a great asset off the bench for this team. Look at this move, beautiful. He's going to be a great scoring asset off the bench. I don't think he's going to start. He could eventually replace Nicholas Batum if we go to that team. Charlotte Hornets, and I think that will be his play for the future. Taking over the forward spot. A lot of people getting up there in age. You know, like I said, Nick Batum, Travion Graham. Uh, Kid Gilchrist can play the three. I think he can come in at the two. So I think that's a good move for them. Uh, let's not forget, Lamb's still there. Hasn't it, it had a pretty good year last year on his own. Uh, but they got Malik Monk. Is Malik Monk better than Lamb right now? I'll be straight up with you, no. Who has more potential? Lamb does. But Lamb hasn't proven himself, right? Or actually, he's proven himself, but they're in a losing situation. So these two solidify the bench. I'll still start Lamb. I'll still start Kemba. And let them go buck wild. I think they have a good team here. They're starting to build up. Frank stretches the floor. Nick stretches the floor. Great defensive player. You got to get, you know, Raymond. Maybe he wants to go in a coaching situation. Uh, Marvin Williams has been a great four throughout the years. Um, and they got Cody Zeller as a backup center. John, Johnny O'Brien actually had a good summer league. Uh, so I think he'll be a good backup as well for the forward spots. So, for me, I think their forward and guard positions are solidified. See who breaks out as a su superstar. It's either Monk or Lamb. And I know Lamb has had a lot of time. I'm giving him a chance here. Lamb is still a great player. Don't let me get to Lamb highlights. He's been amazing. Monk didn't play in the summer league, so that's something we got to think about. Uh, but I didn't see him, but Dwayne Bacon just definitely made some inroads and ways and proved himself to be a legitimate NBA player. I think he'll make the roster. He'll spend some time in the D-League, but eventually he's going to come back in and take this thing over. Last but not least, I saved the best for last. A guy that I love to see played on multiple teams um, in the NBA. Uh, was highly regarded coming out of college, but had a nasty... With the intensity and... Was Mr. Pierre Jackson. Pierre Jackson was awesome in the summer league. Did a great job for the Pistons. Matter of fact, I don't see why the Pistons wouldn't pick this kid up to back up Pierre Jackson. All right. Um, Luke can play the point a little bit, but Pierre Jackson was incredible. Was incredible. He's definitely showing maturity. He's showing, hey, I, I have the explosiveness, but I don't really need it. A la Derrick Rose, what he's showing, it's there if he needs it. He doesn't really need it. You know, I know people like to see it, but you don't need it in this league. Set the pick and hit that jump shot, and that's what he's doing. So I think for me, he was one of the top picks outside of the draft that I think needs to be picked up by an NBA team. He does the job. He, he's good defensively. He's, he's taller than Nate Robinson. 
So I was saying he's too small. Well, he's taller than Nate. You know, he reminds me of Kay Felder uh, on the Cavs. You know, play the kid. Play him. You're going to reap the benefits. He's a great scorer, great distributor. He can definitely be the backup point guard. There's no doubt on my mind. So another great player that uh, showcased himself in the summer league, distribu distribution, scoring. He does it all. And that is my cap off for the summer league for my top players, according to what I saw. All right. Anyhow, leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts on these players and where they're going to go. You know, we talked about the draft picks. We talked about Henry Ellison, Pierre Jackson, and I didn't show a video of Johnny O'Brien, but Johnny O'Brien, let me know your thoughts and where they're headed. Peace.